falling in the wind or something. How can you possibly even consider putting this thing together? Uh, this one is a real uh, mind blower, that's for sure. Um, I noticed that the uh, record time on this was like an hour and 51 minutes for whoever had this disc image originally, so... <laughs> If you're looking for a challenging jigsaw puzzle style video game, uh, I guess this is the one. Our next release is known as Castle Excellent in Japan and Castle Quest in the United States. It was published and developed by ASCII, a company that seems to specialize in games for Japanese computers. Castle Excellent was also released on the MSX at around the same time. Now this game is in fact a sequel to a 1985 MSX title called The Castle. This is the castle right here. Castle Excellent is essentially a bigger, better update on the castle, um, and that exactly is what the Excellent in the title is supposed to imply. The NES port was actually handled by Bits Laboratory. You would probably classify the castle games as puzzlish platformers, similar in feel to Load Runner. The goal is simply to get through the various interconnected rooms in this maze-like castle and rescue a princess, avoiding the many, many monsters and hazards found in every single room. Altogether, there are a hundred rooms. The catch is that the doors between the rooms are locked. You will need a key of the correct color in order to open a door, and the keys will actually disappear after one use. As a result, there's a lot of trial and error in this game, since you often don't know what's in the next room until you open it. And since the keys are in general in very short supply, you'll often find yourself trapped and have to start over. This game was also released in the United States by Nexoft, which was simply a division of ASCII used for releasing carts in the United States. The cover made it look more like a standard fantasy adventure type game. The main difference was that you had many more lives in the US version. You were quite vulnerable to monster attacks, and even though you have an extremely short dagger with virtually uh, no reach at all, you will occasionally be able to defend yourselves against the enemies. Some monsters, such as that green guy with a pink hat, are not, not able to be harmed by your sword, so you'll simply have to avoid them. One thing I don't like about Castle Excellent is that the controls are pretty screwy. You can jump, but you can actually sort of levitate in the air for a second. However, in general I find it sort of difficult to jump correctly, and some of the uh, obstacles in this game do require some very precise jumping, so I found myself getting killed quite frequently trying to jump over things. Despite the fact that the US version gives you a whole bunch of lives, I found myself dying very frequently and using up the lives pretty quickly. So while Castle Quest is a pretty cool game, just expect to run into dead ends quite frequently, and it's probably going to take you quite a while to get all the way through the game. Well, we've seen a lot of shoot 'em ups on the Famicom so far, but finally we've come to one of the all time great shoot 'em ups for the system, Xanic, or Xanic AI to give the full title. Xanic AI is a revised version of an earlier 1986 MSX game, which we see here. Xanic was pretty decent for an MSX title, but the Famicom version really took the console's shooter to a whole new level. First of all, we should note that Xanic is an early title from Compile, which would go on to become perhaps the greatest developer of shooters for home systems. Now, one of the things about Compile is they were real technical wizards, and Xanic somehow manages to present very fast gameplay with a large number of sprites while avoiding flicker and sh uh, slowdown. How this was accomplished, I really have no idea, but compare this to a Micronix title, such as Sun Sun, and see the difference between good and bad programming for the Famicom. Even more surprisingly, Xanic utilizes a relatively aggressive sort of AI, where the game becomes more difficult depending on how you play it. 
For example, grabbing the shield power-up like I've done here, will cause all sorts of difficult enemies to flood the screen. Suddenly all these missiles end up being shot at you. The shield is one of several secondary weapons found throughout the game, and you can also uh, use the primary laser. And this can be upgraded by occasionally shooting those little blocks and getting the glowing uh, orbs that appear out of them. Here's one of the many bosses in the game. Um, defeating him will require you to shoot at all the little uh, laser firing vents there. Early levels like this are pretty simple, but uh, get a few levels into the game and suddenly it becomes pretty hectic. The power-ups that you get in the game are all quite different. For example, the shield is quite handy for protecting you against enemy fire, but then you're stuck using your uh, regular laser weapon. Of course, the laser weapon does get better the more you upgrade it. Now, once you've defeated this enemy, you'll then go on to the next level. There's sort of a little uh, warp animation here. Yeah, I guess that's pretty cool. Now, your actual secondary weapon is selected by shooting those various numbers, like the three you just saw there. And if you uh, collect the same number repeatedly, it'll power up your secondary weapon. And definitely some are more useful than the others. Oh, here apparently I've been killed and I'm stuck using my uh, 